My last video on making a very large wheel has been a hit. Many people ask how the spokes were made, so I'll cover that now. I made the spokes from 2mm wire, which is a common size for bicycles. Wire is sold in coils, so the first step is straightening it. It's possible to straighten wire by holding one end in a vise, and you can pull on the other end to get it straight. But it's a tedious process, and it's hard to get it perfect. A faster way to straighten wire is by stretching. I used my car to stretch lengths of wire. I formed a loop in both ends of the wire, then placed one loop over a strong pipe, and connected the other end to my car. All you need to do is back up a little bit, and it stretches the wire very quickly. After straightening, the wire can be cut to length. It's a good idea to allow a little extra material. Let's look at a standard bicycle spoke and measure the features. There's a 90 degree bend and the end flares out. The flared portion of the spoke is about 150 thousandths in diameter. And it's about 230 thousandths from the back of the spoke to the flare. I'm going to make a simple fixture to help create this feature. I'm going to make my fixture from two pieces of quarter inch by one inch aluminum bar. This piece is two inches long and this is three and a half. And they'll fit in my vise like this. So the first step is I want to join these with two screws. So I'll do the layout for the whole pattern on this part. I'll put it in the vise and I've set my dial caliper to a half inch so I'm going to put a center line on this and then I'll put a screw a half inch from each edge. So where these lines cross is the center of the hole locations. I'll center punch those then I'll use a pilot drill to make the first holes Now I want to transfer this whole pattern onto the second piece, making it flush at the top end. So I'll get this position in the vise and carefully align this so all the edges are square. Then I'll put a transfer punch in the first hole, tap it. So that's the center location for my first hole. I'll drill that. Then I'll align the first set of holes and then transfer punch the location for the second hole. And I'll drill the second hole. I'm going to use 1032 screws to hold these two parts together. So I'll open up these holes now so I can tap them for the 1032 size. Now I'm using a 1032 tap. I'll put a little lubrication on it. Then I'll open up the holes in this part with the clearance size for a number 10 screw. I'll use a countersink to deburr all the holes. I'll get a couple of 1032 screws and join these together. So now I can put grooves in these plates just the right size for the spoke to fit into. 
Working from the dimensions of the spoke I'm modeling, I've calculated that the groove for the spoke in my fixture needs to be 190 thousandths from this edge. So I've set my dowel caliper to that dimension and I'm putting a mark on the fixture at 190 thousandths. And I've decided to have the channel in this direction 250 thousandths from this edge. So I'll put a mark there. So these lines on my fixture show where the channels will be. I also want to put a hole in this location. And the reason for that is where these two channels meet, I need a small radius to clear the radius of the bend. So I'm going to drill a 3 16 hole right here where the channels cross. So I'll center punch it, drill it with the pilot drill. Then I'll open it up to 3 16 And now I can drill the grooves for the spoke. So now I'll use a 2 millimeter drill bit to make the channels for the spoke. I'll do the short one first. And now the long one. And the last step is I need to put a countersink on this side to give me a recess to form the mushroom end of the spoke. So I'll countersink this end of the channel until it measures 150 thousandths at the top. The fixture is complete. Let's see how it works. It's time to do a test of the fixture. The first step is I'm going to put a bend on a scrap piece of wire. And I don't know exactly how much I want to have sticking out, so I'm going to use an arbitrary amount, a little bit over a quarter of an inch. And I'll just tap that over to make a 90 degree bend. So there's our bend. And now I will install this in the fixture. So I'll get this plate put into place. Then I'll put the wire into the fixture. Install the second side to capture the wire. The amount that this wire sticks up out of the fixture will determine the size of the head on the spoke. And I don't know exactly what I need. So I'm going to start by putting a plate that's 80 thousandths of an inch thick over the wire. Then I'll sand the spoke down flush. So now I know the height of the spoke above the fixture. And we'll just do a test with this and see what we get. So I'll use an oxyacetylene torch to heat the end of the spoke red. I'm actually going to melt the end of that spoke. And then while that's glowing red, I'll tap it with a hammer. And that will form the head of the spoke. So let's pull this apart and see what we have. Well, that didn't work very well. The biggest problem I see is that there's actually a kink on the spoke right at the bend. And I think I see why that's happened. Remember, I put a hole in the fixture to accommodate the radius of the bend in the spoke. Well, I can see now that was a bad idea. The hole in here provides an opening that the hammering pushes the spoke down into. So this fixture just isn't going to work. I'm going to make a new fixture just like this one, and I think the next one I'll actually make from steel to make it stronger. I can see that this is deflecting a little bit from the hammering. So I'll be back in a couple of minutes with a new fixture made of steel without this hole in it. I've made the new fixture from steel, and I left out that hole that was causing a problem, but I need to modify this a little bit. Where the two holes intersect, I have a sharp corner 
and I need to ease that sharp corner so the radius of the bent spoke will fit. So I'm going to use a carbide burr to do that. I'll hold the part in a vise, and I have a very fine pointed burr I'll use. I'll try the spoke into place, and it looks like that's perfect. So I'll do the other side as well, and it'll be ready to go. That looks great. So let's give this fixture a try. I have a new test piece set up. So I'll put that 80,000 spacer over the spoke and sand it down flush. Then I'll heat the end of this red hot. And I'll tap it with a hammer. Let's take a look at that. Well, that looks pretty good, but I think I'll do another test and see if I can get the head to be a little bit larger. So I have a new spoke set up in the fixture, and this time I'm going to use an eighth inch spacer, a little bit thicker than the previous one. So I'll sand the spoke down flush. And let's give this one a try. We'll take a look at this one. I like that better. So that's going to make a fine spoke. It's larger in diameter and it's better defined. So I'm very happy with the way this fixture is working for making the hook end of the spoke. Once you form this end on all your spokes, of course they need to be cut accurately to length and then the other end needs to be threaded. The best way to thread bicycle spokes is with a thread rolling machine, and I don't have one. They're a little bit expensive, so I send these out to a bicycle shop. You can find videos online of thread rolling machines. I'll put a link in the description so you can see how they work, but that's the best way to thread bicycle spokes. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. I love making these videos and I'm honored that you're watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified about new videos. I read every comment and I do my best to answer all questions. If you like what I'm doing, please click the Patreon link and become one of the great people who help me create new videos.